What's up guys, it's Brad from JPH Media here. Today we're going to be talking about color correction and more specifically how I did the color correction in my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera test video, Cinematic Los Angeles. I'm going to go through a few shots and just kind of go through how exactly that I graded them. It's a fairly simple process. As you guys know, I'm not a professional colorist, but I've been getting questions on how I did the color correction for that specific video, so I thought I would make a quick video showing you how. So here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve, the editing and color correction program that I used to make this video. All of this footage was captured in camera on ProRes files in film mode. When you set your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera to record in film mode, you get more latitude and freedom to color correct in post, so it's very important to set your camera to this setting. If you are using a camera other than the Blackmagic Cinema camera, then there are typically other profiles you can use. You can use a variety of Sony S-Logs, as well as, of course, if your camera shoots RAW, you should definitely use that. So anyway, if you are not using a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which I imagine some of you aren't, then don't worry, the process is relatively similar. It will just require some minor tweaks. So here's the first shot I'm going to show you how I color corrected. So the way DaVinci Resolve works is you have your input, the footage, and you have a bunch of nodes, and then you have your output. So whatever you put in between the input and the output will change the way your footage looks. So the first thing I know I wanted to do for this footage is make a little bit of a film look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a node to the timeline. And you can do this by going and clicking right here, clicking Add Node. So clicking outside of this area, go to Add Node, and then go to Corrector. And you drag your corrector over to the node system here. So now that I've added that node, I'm going to apply a basic LUT to it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to 3D LUT, then go down to Film Looks, and then I'm going to select the first Fujifilm look. Okay, so honestly, this is mostly what I did to get my general look of that footage. I didn't really add a lot other than this basic LUT because stylistically, I feel this looks really nice. But in case you want to um, correct any of your footage. I'm going to bring up some scopes and show you how I would do that. So we're going to go to show scopes. And then as you can see, our scopes come up. What I usually do if I'm going to balance an image is I will try to make these three red, green, and blue waveforms match up. So as you can see, they're pretty close right now. Red is a little bit stretched more than the other two, but personally, I like the look of the film and it's not going anywhere crazy, so I would probably just leave it. Now, if I wanted to change these, I would go to the first node, our input footage, double click, and then I would start making changes on this node. Now, normally when I'm doing basic color correction, I'll either go to the color, color wheels or I'll go to the curve setting. Curves will allow you to adjust contrast as well as individual uh, red, green, and blue channels in, a, in the, the highlights, midtones, and the shadows. And then color wheels will allow you to correct the shadows, midtones, and highlights, as well as the overall look of the image. Say I wanted to bring the highlights of the red down a little bit to kind of match this green area a little bit more. I would go to gain, and then I would pull away from red and toward blue. As you can see, it's pulling the red areas down a little bit and therefore correcting our footage. Personally, I like the red look of the footage, so I'm going to leave it there, but this is just an example on how you would do that. If I want to balance this footage, this is what I would do. I would go take the red down a little bit, just a tiny bit. And it's going a little bit blue now, a little bit too blue now. Probably something like this. Then the red is a little bit dark here as well. It's catching a lot of the dark areas as well. So I'll just increase the blue in the shadows, or decrease, raise the reds in the shadows. So we're looking pretty good here, honestly. Another thing I did when I was color correcting this footage is I really wanted to go for a very saturated feel. So I took the saturation and I boosted it up by 100%. Now, obviously, this is not always what you wanted to do, but I was just the look that I wanted. So the general process is you try to get these three to match fairly closely, and then you kind of change it depending on the style of look that you're going for. So I thought this look was pretty good, and I just moved forward from there. Just to show you another example on how you can change the RGB parade through the curve setting, um, you can change the red channel 
the highlights and the shadows through the curves. And you can change the green channel individually. Of course, as you're correcting the green channel, you are also affecting the other two because they're all intertwined. And you can change the blue if you're, if you're interested in that as well. So that's the general way I did this footage. Now I'm just going to I'll give you one more example on how I did this in another shot. So here we have one more shot I used in the video. So let's just go through the process again. First, let's add a node. So right click, add node corrector, then add it to your node tree. And then now we're going to add the Fujifilm look to this node. So 3D LUT. So right click on the node, go to 3D LUT, film looks, and the first Fujifilm look. As you can see in this particular case, we're getting a little bit of a blown out look. So before we get into balancing, let's do a little adjustment on the contrast. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down a little bit, and then I'm also going to bring this down to bring the shadows, make the shadows a little bit deeper. Now that we've done that, we're going to try to match the three hay forms a little bit. So I'm going to go here. And as you can see, even here, we're actually matching. The histograms but you need to realize that even when I try to match the histograms the image doesn't really look as you feel it should actually the original image looks a lot nicer so when you're looking at a histogram you kind of have to say like well does this image actually have a lot of blue in it this actually has a lot of blue in the highlights and it should because we're looking at blue sky what I'm trying to say is you might not want to ba balance the histogram or the uh, the RGB parade exactly right I just use these three color wheels in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights to match the waveform between the three colors generally, and then I just go for whatever look that I desire through the monitor. Again, once I decided upon a look, I decided to increase the saturation and give it a very colorful feel. One of the things I failed to mention earlier was that you want to try to get your three waveforms to be spread out through the whole area of the graph here. So what that means is you want your brightest point to be at the top of the waveform here, and then you want your darkest to be close to zero. So this is pure white, this is pure black. One of the things that adding that first LUD does for us is it actually stretches this whole waveform for us. So as you can see, when we do that, like we did before, which gets it pretty close to the way we want it. Um, but if you want to adjust these more, then again, you can go back to that first node go to the curves, and then as you can see, you can adjust, you're adjusting all three of the color channels here, the general contrast, and you can make your general S curve. Um, as you can see, if you do this, the blacks start to get crushed, you're losing detail, but you really want to spread it out through the whole histogram and try to get as much detail as possible while also having a nice clean black and a clean white. Anyway, that's it guys, hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'll get back to you. GBS Media Facebook page is in the description below. If you want to like it there to get the latest updates, feel free to do so. And uh, yeah, feel free to comment whatever you want to see next.